welcome back to the Prepared Mindset Podcast, everybody. I'm your host, Austin. Lexi's hanging out tonight. What's up? Hey, guys. And we got another episode for you. Uh, feeling good, you know, week of Christmas, work is slowing down finally. Everybody's in that the holiday mood. We're hanging out, recording. Uh, I got both my dogs down here reenacting WrestleMania 3. When one's trying to body slam the other, it's... It's a magical, magical <laughs> feeling tonight, but um, I do want to make sure that I recorded. Um, and we're going to try a little something something different, something I've been saving for a little while. Um, we're going to do our first ever grab bag episode tonight. Um, just random questions that we've gotten compiled from uh, listeners and, and friends and stuff that have uh, messaged and mailed in. Um, full disclosure, the plan for tonight right, was to not do this with you and I. Yep. Nope. Yep. I was not the original guest. No, this was supposed to be something done with uh, Trevor and Sam. However, uh, Trevor popped positive for the coof uh, <laughs> this past weekend. Stop it. So he... COVID. <laughs> it's so, it sounds so much more fun when you say somebody's got the coof and they're like, It sounds like oh. a venereal disease. Exactly. Exactly. It sounds way better. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, uh, you know, he's uh, hanging out. He's on the mend. We wish him well and hope that he's uh, back up and at his, you know... Uh, normal malarkey in no time <laughs> and uh so we're gonna do this tonight we're gonna do a couple uh questions it's gonna be a little bit interesting we're gonna kind of jump all over the place but um but but fuck it you know it's the holidays i'm gonna have a good time with this yeah right? so uh before we get into the questions though i want to make sure as always we say thank you to our presenting sponsors here at the prepared mindset uh starting with slimfitholsters.com guys sadly if you haven't gotten your orders in for the holidays with SlimFit, you're probably not going to get your holster by then, but that is not a good reason not to go check them out. SlimFitHolsters.com, they hooked us up with discount code PREPARED10. It's going to knock off 10%, and it's going to hook you all up with some free shipping. Whatever you guys need for your Kydex carry solutions, they got it. You need mag carriers, holsters, wallets, dump trays, SlimFitHolsters.com. They got it all taken care of. Whatever you need, what light bearing um, in the waistband, outside the waistband, right? Their Victorious outside the waistband is their their newest model that they released. It's got you can adjust the angle, you can uh, cant it positively, negatively, you know, uh, neutrally. I mean, there's a lot of different solutions. Okay, for outside the waistband, I know some folks that's just the way they like to carry. You know, my dad's that way. I got a couple of friends that are that way. It's not. It's not my cup of tea, but it's a really, really good holster, and it could, they have light bearing, non-light bearing, every you know model and make you could think of, colors, patterns, everything. Uh, their Gladius is what I carry in, uh, appendix up front, right? It's got the flex joint in it with the bungee, super, super comfortable. Um, and then Lexi, you carry with the uh, with the Guard Ultra, right? Yep. Yep, and both of those come with their uh, rubber concealment wedge which I think is a lot nicer than the foam wedges you guys see out there from a lot of other companies that um, adhere on using like glue and stuff. These attach by screws. And I think you you don't use regular clips, right? Yours has got the Alta clips on it. Ulti clip, yep. Yep, so you carry with your yoga pants. And, you know, so if you're if you're a lady out there looking for, for a new holster, um, definitely recommend those. Guys, our, our code one more time, it's prepared 10. It's going to save 10% off and free shipping. That's slimfitholsters.com out in Colorado. Go check those guys out. They do fantastic work. Also, cannot forget to mention our good friends over at mymedic.com. Guys, it's the winter, at least here in Michigan. It's it's winter. Um Make sure you're covered, right? Uh, both literally and figuratively. Figuratively, you know, literally speaking, get a mylar space blanket. Keep it in your car. Get two. Get three. Get four. All right. If you're ever traveling with a full vehicle and you break down the side of the road in a blizzard or something, you're going to be really freaking happy that you did. All right. They have sales going on now through Christmas, right? So even if you're not going to get your kit delivered to you by Christmas, you might still be able to take advantage of some of their awesome sales. Okay. And even if you miss it, right, they still gave us code MINDSET20. It's going to save 20% off your order, which is huge, especially when you're talking about some of these medical kits. Guys, it, it can get expensive, right? But if there's one area you should never, ever skimp on, right, it's your life-saving gear, right? You don't want, like, the cheap, um, <clears throat> how can I put this? You don't want the cheap, like, Chinese-made bandages or... Um, you know, the crappy gauze or something that's not going to work when you're sitting there bleeding out from a gunshot wound or a laceration or something like 
it's just, it's the last place you should be looking for, for cost cutting. You know, uh, we talk about it with armor. We talk about it with tourniquets, medical, right? Don't skimp out on the medical. The life you save may literally be your own and, or, or your wives or your kids. I mean, you know, but you get what I'm saying, right? My medics got it all covered. They have auto medics. They have boat medics that float. Those are great, especially, you know what, if you're looking for something that's going to float, maybe you're an ice fisherman. Not a bad idea to have something like that falls in the water, you don't lose your medic kit and you have it around in case something happens. And accidents happen out in the winter, snowmobiling, uh, fishing, ice fishing, um, hunting and stuff, you know, muzzle loader season up here in Michigan is real big. They've got everything that you could possibly need. They got refill kits. If you, if you bought a medic kit from their company, they're still going to help you out. They're still going to hook you up. They got the refills for bleed or burn, you know, uh, cut. I mean, whatever it is, they have a solution for it. Head over to mymedic.com, use our code mindset20, save yourself 20% off. You can also head over to our offer section on our Facebook page. If you guys are looking to support the podcast and get some good medical gear, make sure you guys are all covered. Go through our affiliate link there. You can still use our discount code mindset20. Only difference is a little piece of whatever you guys spend with mymedic is going to come back and help support the effort here at Prepared Mindset. One more time, mindset20 mymedic.com. So jumping into it. All right. This is something I've actually been thinking about doing for a while, just because it's a really organic, uh, concept. Um, not that it's necessarily new, no. right. But in that it gives us an opportunity to kind of jump around, um, and, you know, just explore some various topics and kind of have a good time with some of it. Um, some things that I'm familiar with, you're familiar with, we're both familiar with, you know, um, have some really just good discussion about, uh, I mean, a ton of stuff really. Um, I know I picked out like a, a handful that we have, um, <clears throat> we're probably not gonna get through all of them tonight and that's fine because I do want to save some of these for when we have Sam and Trevor here, but, uh, you got the list in front of you, right? Yep. No, I got it right here. Okay. So let's go ahead and I mean, let's, let's just jump into it. What do you, what's first? All right. What would you consider the absolute essentials to EDC when leaving the house? Essentials when I leave the house. Um, I mean, for me, talking about everyday carry, um, and you got to remember it's situational, right? Sure. So for me, when I leave the house, probably a firearm, um, my 43 X, my Glock 43 X carry it in a slim fit gladius. Um, if I'm going somewhere where it's permissive, right. Sure. Um, if I know, you know, especially right now during the holidays, almost everywhere you're going and everything you're doing is to meet people and to drink. Right. Yep. So if I'm drinking, I'm not, obviously not going to carry a firearm with me, but, um, in addition to the firearm, uh, I'll carry a pocket knife. I have a, a ton of pocket knives that I rotate in and out. Um, but I always have something in my pocket because the time I don't, of course, is going to be the time that I you need that it. I fucking need one. Yep. Right. So a pocket knife. I do always have, I talked about this last episode, uh, my light, my pocket flashlight, my Streamlight Polytech um, with a theorem, uh, finger ring on it. And I know you carry, what is you have a Phoenix or something, right? A Phoenix LD 30. Okay. Yeah. Yours is like way fucking brighter than mine. <laughs> um, you're welcome. By the way, I got you That's that. Great. Um, so yeah, so I would, so my pocket knife, my light, um, my key bar, which has all my keys obviously on it. Um, I fob for my vehicle, um, my wallet, which, uh, is an, uh, and our Apollo. Um, and then I usually have, um, a medic kit with me, you know, so I'll, I'll take my EDC medic, um, from my medic. I'll take that if we're walking around the neighborhood with the dogs or something. Um, or if we're traveling, we both keep, uh, my facts, uh, in, in our vehicles. Um, so your vehicle, in my opinion, is kind of, cause I mean, you have to drive to get almost anywhere, right? Right. So, um, your vehicle is kind of an extension of your EDC in my opinion. So I, you know, I have a, a my fact and, and some stuff in there, but, uh, I mean, I think that's pretty much it for me. I know for you, it's a little bit different because, I mean, you go to the office every day. I work from home. Yep. So my pockets and stuff, I don't I, I, just, I don't have as much stuff with me because I'm not really planning for, like, an 11-hour excursion out of the house every day. Sure. No, I mean, my, my EDC is pretty similar, although I would honestly say, unfortunately, my standard EDC is sans firearm mm -hmm. um, just because I do, I do work somewhere that is not... 
firearm friendly firearm friendly on I mean, the most, premises most places aren't which, which is fine right like it is what it is it's it's, um, it's, it's not fine well it's kind of bullshit no but I, it's just it is the norm and we, we it is what it, it is and we learn to work around it you know right. so um honestly women's dress pants are the worst offenders of pockets that i've ever had the misfortune of wearing so, oh like the fake pockets and there's stuff, a lot of fake pockets with no pockets and then the pockets that the few pants that i have that do have pockets mm-hmm. are some of the smallest pockets that i've ever had so you kind of have to build your your edc around like um those constraints yeah so my my regular edc was built around th- that it, i had my smallest pocket in mind when building it yeah so i know it's only going to get better right like with th- with other pairs of pants that i wear um so as long as I actually have pockets mm-hmm. on my person, I typically have a knife, my little uh, your knife multi tool. Uh, you carry what the con- this will play that uh, concept cryo my cryo M- yep cryo. my mini cryo, which is perfect. It, it actually like fits in the pocket, so I don't I don't usually utilize my pocket clips on any of my tools at least when I'm at work. Yeah, to help conceal it, raises, it a little bit uh, more. Yeah, it raises attention. Um, and I don't want to mess up my work pants. Sure, like they're not, sure. you know, it's not like denim. Um, but so I, yeah, I have my pocket knife. I have my little um, multi tool, which has like the flathead screwdriver, bottle opener, oh, yeah. and like uh, the ratcheting screwdriver with like the Phillips head that's rubber banded into yep, it. Yep. So I who makes that? There's a couple of them out there. If you guys check out like on Amazon and stuff, I think that's where I got yours was Amazon. Um, just don't buy like super cheap shit when it comes to some of these pocket tools. You don't want them to bend when you're trying to use it as a pry bar, for example. Yeah. So for a long time, I had like acrylic nails which uh, are not the most friendly for picking up things or opening cans. So that actually came in really handy at work a few times Sure. when I'd get a, you know, a can of pop out of the cooler or something and I could use the little pry bar to, to, you know, pop it open instead of messing up my nails. Or I actually have had other um, employees need like a screwdriver. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I, it's not the best, right? It's a little pocket tool, but I had one on my person. And I was like, all right, as long as you promise to bring it back, <laughs> like, right. I'll let you borrow it. Sure. Um, my flashlight. And then I usually do go ahead and carry my uh, little mini pen. Oh, the Fisher Space Pen? Yeah, my Fisher Space Pen. And then also um, I need glasses to see. So um, I usually have a, a hang on me with a microfiber on the back. That that's something that I think it's severely underrated for people, especially if you wear glasses or, or honestly, I mean, we all have cell phones, so like, it's why not so have something that can clean the screen? Like, <clears throat> anyone who wears glasses knows all of a sudden you you sneeze or something, and then you got a giant smudge against your glasses from where you like went to cover your you know cover the sneeze, and your your hand smacks your glasses, and yeah, you know, any number of things, and. I, I wear makeup and I get makeup on my glasses and, you know, things happen. And so that's really convenient. Um, but that's just on my person. I mean, going into like regular EDC, I mean, like I always have a bag. Yeah, you know, Usually it's my, like my standard purse. Yeah. Um, but that does vary depending oh, yeah, on what, what I'm wearing. That? What brand is that? Oh, yeah. Do you want to talk about that? No. My Michael Kors that I got for Christmas. It was very nice. Yeah, I spent a bunch. Of money. <laughs> I remember. Um but there's so much more in there that I would, I mean, is an extension, like you said, your vehicle. I mean, I never leave, leave home without my purse. And I mean, sometimes it's a condensed version if I'm wearing something nicer and I want a smaller purse from going somewhere where I'm limited in my bag capacity. But, um, I mean, in my purse, like I have another flashlight, another pocket knife that don't leave my purse. They're specifically See, that, my... I think that's smart. And I know you, you mentioned before when we were talking, you, you've gotten crap at work for like, oh my God, why do you have a knife in your purse? And it's like, why don't you have Yeah, one? why don't you? you? Know, or a flashlight, you know, anything for that matter, really, right? Um, Which was really helpful before I started having, like, before I had a good flashlight that I could carry on my person. Because mm-hmm. this, you know, this Phoenix light I have is, is new. I got it for uh, Sweetest Day in October. So... um. Before that, I had a really small flashlight, which was it was still nice. Like it was convenient. Yeah, it just it, it was. Small but it wasn't. It was convenient because it fit in your pocket, not because correct. it was. Correct. So like you know, having a great. good flashlight in my purse was really nice. 
Um, I usually have a variety of medications on me, that I, even regardless of purse size that I uh, that I carry with me. Yeah. So um, you don't like underestimate. In general, like, women just carry more stuff just because you're like part of your daily process, if you will. Yeah. Is that you have a purse. Yeah. You have a bag that holds extra extraneous things for you. Well, to be fair, they uh. Hey. Made our pockets small so they could market purses to us. So. Uh, I mean, I guess it's kind of brilliant, right? I so. mean, from a marketing ploy, <laughs> yes. From me spending money, no. Well, but all right. What else you got? All right. Um, what is the worst experience you ever had on a range, and what happened? Um, do you want to explain yours first? Because I. I think your first time shooting was probably your worst experience at a range. Uh, it's a toss-up, honestly. But, yeah, I mean, that first time was pretty rough. Um, just because I didn't really know what I was doing. You know, nothing catastrophic happened by any means as far as thinking about your first time at a range. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> um, I definitely uh, was holding the gun wrong. Yeah, you're, you're and, remember uh, your your support hand was too high. Uh, support hand was frame. too high. I got um, some slide bite, blood everywhere. Oh yeah, yeah, that absolutely was a Ruger, everywhere. Ruger LC9, which is like another reason why I don't recommend that particular and, firearm to basically anybody. And it was so quick, like right, like because I shot and it yeah. came back and cut me. Yeah. And that action was so fast that I hadn't even realized at first that I had been cut. Right, and then uh, you when look I went at your to, hand and I went to reload, and I was like, "Why oh, is this so it, slick?" Yeah, because there was blood everywhere, and then the ranger officer was irritated, even though I think we were the only ones in there. Yeah, I maybe think we, we one other, time, like maybe yeah. maybe another pair of people, like, but well, and then and that's why we don't frequent that range anymore. And we've talked about stuff like that in the past too, like the the toxic side of the two way culture, and that's. Like, shitty range safety officers that just get make... I mean, obviously, it was your first time shooting, or one of your first time shooting. Um, so, y- I mean, make it a positive experience in light of it being a bad experience of what was happening with the yeah. cut and everything. That's an opportunity to, like, you know, try and warm that experience. I, Yeah, I, I can't stand that shit. Well, I think. and I didn't even... I didn't even... I wasn't like, oh, <clears> my <throat> God. Like, I was like, oh, hey, I'm bleeding. Like, yeah. cradled my hand left the range went to the range off like was washing oh, yeah. my hands i was like hey can you just give me a, a band-aid super, yeah it didn't need to be a super dramatic ordeal yeah i wasn't asking you to call 911 or give me stitches like i was like yeah hey I, like fucked up my hand like could you just go grab the first aid kit like i'm gonna wash my hands quick mm-hmm. grab me a band-aid <laughs> like yeah that's pretty it's not that big of a deal i mean yeah that was a pretty the stupid experience i think I, that's 100 percent on the range uh, safety officer for just being a douchebag yeah um i would say my worst range experience there's been i mean there's a couple that kind of just end up blurring together um our local range here that i I love frequenting um or you know or i did before ammo got so damn hard to come by for so you know so much money but um we have a great range here that that's close to the house that i you know it's it's a little bit of a drive it's not super close but um it's yeah the eight mile and gratiot area right and everyone's seen the movie eight mile with eminem and thinks that eight mile is the the do all end all ghetto of america right um but if only they knew what's that <laughs> if only they knew yeah no it's not <laughs> um so you get you get a variety of clientele and a wide range of experiences um, yep. and shooters that, that come through there and you can always kind of tell who knows what's up, who's there to learn, and then who's just there to, you know, fucking shoot some guns and, and don't give a shit. Um, I've only had a loaded gun pointed at me one time, really. Um, it wasn't malicious, but it was negligent, obviously. Um, and I'll never forget it because it was an AK-47 um, or, or some kind of AK variant. It was one of the rental guns, and it was this uh, younger black gentleman. You know, he was there in like his. Uh, you could, and you could tell that he didn't know what he was doing. 
obviously because he left the bay with the gun. He he swept the whole line, myself included, obviously, with this firearm. But he was also he was wearing like uh, Nike slides, like slip, like uh, sandals, right, yep. and and stuff. And um, that's not to like diss on anybody for how they dress or anything like that, or make a cultural jab. It's just people that know about shooting, right? You show up and you're in closed-toed shoes. You're in uh, you're not in super low-cut t-shirts if you're a woman or yep. I guess a man. Um, most guys will show up wearing a hat because the the brim of the hat the bill of the hat whatever will help deflect spent brass like yep. there's just you know uh, collared shirts um the collar helps keep brass out from falling down your shirt i mean there's just certain things people do so you can look at somebody and be like okay you you've done this before and then you can look at people and go okay you really didn't know what you were getting into coming here coming yeah. in here so um i would say that's probably the worst experience i had because that's definitely and this was i mean this wasn't like 20 feet away this guy flagged me like he was literally in the next lane over and i was like i put my stuff down the window and i was walking to the table that they have behind us that you can like set set out your your other paper targets and shit you're not using Mm -hmm. um and this guy comes out and has like and, and and just swept the entire line thank god the range safety officer like just grabbed the fucking thing from the guy um those those two kids because they really in my mind they're kids they behaved really um poorly um were ejected and they kind of threw a fit about it um but from talking to the range officer afterwards that was the second or third time he had he had you know reminded them hey you know there's not too many people in here but you can't be walking out of the bay with that um and then over time because they had like an hour rental or whatever um over time more people came in and then they did it and it was just it yeah it's dangerous you can't do that so no probably my worst range experience i think yeah (laughs) wrestlemania 4 begins damn dogs um if i want to learn to shoot better what's the fastest way um i'm probably not the best person to ask because i don't think i'm a very good shooter to begin with um i would say uh well obviously once you figure out um what firearm is is a right fit for you um i'd say after that is to get comfortable with the firearm um and i think and you did this when you bought your first gun right um i had you do this just spend some time uh and i i almost hate to phrase it this way but spend some time playing with your gun like yeah make sure it's you know follow safety rules make sure it's unloaded if you have any ammo for it at that time you know put it in a separate room far far away where you can't have it accidentally end up in the gun but get comfortable racking the slide um, and pulling the trigger and, you know, lo- uh, inserting and, and dropping the magazine, like learn the administrative side of stuff, get really comfortable with that. So this is less of a fear, uh, inducing experience when you pick up the firearm. Um, that's, that's your, your first thing. Um, and this is super high level, but from there, uh, what I always recommend is start dry firing. Um, as a new shooter, going to the range can be beneficial because it helps you get over again, that fear of the the recoil and the bang and the flash and all that stuff um but dry fire to help work on um your grip dry fire to help work on your sight alignment your sight picture eventually you move into things like your draw stroke um i'd say dry fire is spending probably 90 percent of your time dry firing at first is what's going to help you improve the fastest um especially right now where money is so tight in terms of ammo and training and stuff um so eventually once you do get yourself in a position where you can take uh, your first class, and I'm not talking your first class like, oh, I took my CPL course. Because yeah. What did they have you do? Like 20 rounds? <laughs> yeah, you have to hit yeah, 20 rounds on paper or something, and you get 30 or 40 shots. You have to, I mean, yeah, it's... It's not much of an actual shooting course. It's more of a legalities course. Yeah, um, I mean, that's on paper. Like, obviously, you want to aim you want to get your your aiming better which the cpl is not so so once you can get the opportunity to take like a concealed carry tactics course or a handgun one or a rifle one course um that you're not so alien to what they're saying to you um you can really absorb the the actual material and the teaching that they're trying to to give you um there's a lot of good videos out there on beginning shooting stuff from places like you know t-rex arms has done some stuff i know they're kind of moving away from the beginning shooter uh there, there's a ton of videos out there from guys that shoot ipsic and uspca the competition circuits 
Um, there's a ton of information out there from guys like uh, Mike Glover at Fieldcraft. So um, I, I think that's probably your, your best starting point. Um, do some research, find out what firearm makes sense for, for your use case um, and your body type. Uh, get familiar with it and then learn how to dry fire some fundamentals, do some research online and take a, a beginning fundamentals class. Um, well, like anything, it's not going to happen overnight. You know, just being completely upfront, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, but enjoy it, right? You know, you should enjoy practicing. Um, if you hate practicing, if you hate going through this stuff, um, I, maybe it's just not. Maybe it's not for you. Yeah, or maybe maybe you're doing the wrong wrong thing. You know, there. I'm mean, not to say that there are definitely right and wrong trainings, mm-hmm. right and wrong ways to do things in in this very specific hobby. And uh, sure. But, you know, there's also, you know, if you want to improve, you know, if you're thinking from exercise, right, there there are different ways to build different muscles. Yeah. So you can find different, you know, maybe this one drill isn't the best for you, and but maybe yeah. this other one well, is. And, that's, and, and it's different for everyone because some people will, like, everyone is going to excel at different skill sets. Yep, absolutely. Um, so, I mean, luckily it's, you know, it's 2021, it's almost 2022, with the the golden age of communication that we're living in, right? Um, you can reach out to people on social media. That's how I, I got hooked up with Robbie over at In Our Arms. Sent him a vi- you know found him on Instagram. Sent him a video. Said, "Hey, I really want to take your Carbine Two course. Do you think I'm good enough to skip your Carbine One?" Yup, come on out, and it was a great experience. Yeah. Right. So if you have questions, you can send videos and questions and things to people. Like, I mean, I, I would certainly offer my input to anybody who asks. I don't, I don't really hold myself as a firearms instructor, but I'll try and help where I can. There are plenty of guys out there that are firearms instructors and are more than willing to give you some fundamental input to try and get you out to a class. Yep. And that's not a sales tactic. That's just, hey, I can only you can you're only going to learn so much from somebody giving you some some feedback on on some videos um however you utilize that is is obviously in your hands but um you know reach out to people use the resources you have available right it's free to have instagram and yep. there's a ton of resources out there free to have youtube free to have facebook take advantage of those and start there and kind of work your way out from from that and see where you end up you know no, what else sounds good um Tips and recommendations on dealing and managing stress. This is not a good question for me. <laughs> it's it's not. I'm 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 abs. I mean, it's something I work on, right? I, I work on a ton. I'm absolute bullshit at managing stress. You, so w- what do you do? <laughs> so obviously, um, we open this episode. This is a really happy time of year for a lot of people. It's also a really stressful time of year. It sure fucking is. <laughs> um, we had that discussion before we came down here to record. It's the the holidays themselves that can be stressful. Work a lot of times, um, kind of fifty fifty. Either you're dead as can be, nothing going on, or you're balls to the wall because it's year end and it's nonstop. So um, yeah. everyone's stress management is going to be a little different. Everyone gets stressed in different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it manifests differently for every person well and Um, if you don't manage it correctly it starts to manifest itself into uh medical problems too so be careful yep that definitely can happen um but i would say some some tips and tricks and by no means am i a doctor so this is not you know uh medical you know medical advice um but i mean everyone says it but like exercise yeah, actually, th- that's a huge one, um, and it, it does help. Like, if I'm having a really bad day at work, that's one of the things that like that I do now is I will go on my lunch break and I'll go to the gym. My boss knows about it now, and she's on board with it. And it honestly has been one of the things that really does help, at least in the moment. It's not going to like cure the issue, obviously, but um, rather than holding on to that anxiety or that anger or that frustration. Um, you know, whether it's family shit or, or workplace stuff, right? Um, the gym, that it's a, it, it, that's a win-win, right? Because you're, you're cutting out your st- whatever stress you're dealing with. You're also, you know, 
health, your personal health is, is a big thing that we're, we, we've talked about and are going to continue to talk about more, right? Um, get to the gym. That's, that's step one of that. So, yeah. And, uh, in the words of, uh, legally blonde, you know, exercise oh, releases endorphins. Endorphins make you happy. I can't believe you just did that on this podcast. And happy people just don't shoot their husbands. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, go to the gym. You don't even have to go to the gym. You can do stuff at home. You know, there, there's plenty of free online workouts. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of gyms with COVID started offering online classes. Um, there are definitely apps and ways you can get or yeah. like monthly subscription that you can pay for and do. Get into yoga, which is... A whole other, I feel like, stress management category in and of itself. I feel like with some of that, you should start seeking out actual instructional help. I just, because I know my mother hurt herself really badly well, attempting to teach herself some yoga stuff. Yeah, um, if you've if and, you've never done it, um, a lot of gyms, I mean, there are some very specific yoga classes, yoga studios. Um, we go to LA Fitness. They offer yoga classes on site included with our okay. membership. Yep. Um, so there are definitely some ways. And if you're looking just for a beginner class, a lot of times you can get a discount um, at those like studios for a, a beginner first time, mm-hmm. first time class, at least learn some of the moves and then you can go home and, and follow along with YouTube videos and, yeah, and stuff recreate to that. that or whatever, duplicate that experience. I'd also say if, cause if, if the gym thing really isn't your bag, right. If you're really just one of those people that just, you hate the gym and you hate structured physical activity like that, um, it's not for everybody, right? No, it just no. isn't. I would say one of the big, the biggest things you can do personally is find something uh, aside from like your work life and family life that brings you joy or yep. brings you some kind of um, allows you to help center yourself and kind of quiet your mind. Um, for some people, it's reading. Yeah, right? like, that would right definitely when, be when, me. Yeah, when lockdown hit, we both. I mean, I started. I've read more in the last two years than I probably have in the last uh, ten. You know. Yeah, I do um, a lot of online reading. I just finished a. <sighs> it, it's not a Harry Potter fan fiction, is it? Maybe. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. Everyone, everyone has their thing. So um, reading. Um, but I, I, I just finished a uh, three three hundred thousand page book. In like a few days. A 300,000 page book. 300,000 word. Oh, 300,000 word. Okay. So, which is, which is a lot of pages. Like that's, that's equivalent for those who do know Harry Potter. That's equivalent to the fifth book, which is the largest book. Yeah. So reading is a good one. Um, um, You could dry fire if that's something you enjoy that, that helps you, like I said, kind of quiet your mind. Um, I think the, the, the thing with that, um, because I do that as well as uh, drumming. Right, I'm a percussionist. Yep, music is a great. Um, it, and I, I think that it's because it gives your brain something else it has to focus on um, in order to, to, you know, complete whatever task you're working on. Pretty like with music, you're thinking about the music, you're thinking about the notes, you're thinking about what's coming next and all that stuff. Things like dry fire, you're focusing on your processes, your procedures, your, you know, it just, it, it gets your, your mind away from thinking and focusing on whatever it is that's that's causing you to be in such a shit mood and is like driving <laughs> up your you know what I mean driving up your blood pressure and everything yep. but um you know and, and lastly I mean and this is just it's it's common sense it's really difficult sometimes but it's just really common sense it's just cut out the shit that's causing the stress if you can sometimes it's work and you can't do anything about it because we all got fucking mortgages and bills well, right i mean to us i mean that that one's definitely like a, a long-term thing but like Cause if, it, but it, it, it could be family it could be friends like and some of that is it's extreme like family is about as long term as it gets and it's difficult to cut out those people that that make your life miserable or they make you feel guilty for for being uh unhappy and things uh, and but, cut that shit out Like once you start distancing yourself from those people, um, those relationships in your life, those like toxic emotional centers, don't don't let people, oh, well, it's your family. Oh, well, it's your friends. Don't let them tell you that if, if it's not good for you and you've, and you've tried to talk with those people. Now I'm not saying like, oh, your brother really pissed you off or your sister did and you know, you're like, well, I'm just gonna cut you out because you irritated me this with this one thing. Like, yeah. no, that that's not I mean, healthy. It, like, talk with nothing, them. If nothing else, you can you can always insert some distance. You can take a break and just go a week or two or maybe a month without seeing somebody. And look. there's ways to help manage it. It doesn't always mean it's gonna totally remove it, but um, those are a couple of things. You know, I hopefully that helps somebody. I don't know. 
Yeah, just find what works for you. Whatever whatever that is. I mean, don't do drugs, but uh Yeah, don't don't self medicate. Don't go straight to booze um, <laughs> and powders and pills. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um but you know, don't don't let someone tell you 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 can seek advice, but ultimately if it if it calms you yeah. you know, like like that saying, if it's stupid but works, is it really stupid? Yeah. You that's know, true. like this is one of those cases, like everyone's Stress is unique, and, and your and de-stressing will be unique. Stress leads to <clears throat> stress leads to other issues. It can, things are manifesting itself into into medical issues. I had, I had a coworker right just last year with everything we were dealing with, with COVID, and then we had a project, um, like a product conversion, so to speak, that we got pulled into a project together on. I mean, the poor lady, she ended up with shingles from stress, and she's like in her early thirties. That's not. It's not normal, right? So, so not being able to um, manage your stress medical wise, it can be impactful um, emotionally, right? And that's not to say that it, that's not just saying like, hey, you're going to be physically, emotionally upset and, and angry. It cause you to lash out at people who are the positive relationships in your life, which can then lead that to being additionally destructive. Yeah. Right. So then you're stuck with the negative people that pushed you to do this. And then the people that were there that have supported you and are the positive centers in your life, you're going to lash out at them, causing them to leave, which is then just going to compound the issue. It's going to create more stress and just an all around, you know, worse, worse situation in, in general. So, I mean... It, I, I I would I would recommend uh, if it is a real serious issue, talk to somebody, you know, whether professionally or just a friend, you know, or, or reach out to your network and just, hey man, shit sucks right now. Do you want to get a beer? Do you want to come out? You want to hang out and dry fire? I mean, just try to make sure that you you have those times for for yourself. Um, that you, like I said, you can you can kind of center yourself and and, and quiet the bullshit and uh, and get back to, um, get back to yourself. You know. Yeah, no, that sounds good. What uh, else you got? Let's do like two more, I think. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Um, What was your first ever firearm? My first firearm was my, I mean, it seems like it's pretty straightforward. It's a uh, M&P Shield Gen 1 in 9mm. Um, I actually didn't want it. I, I went... <laughs> um, and I've told this story on this podcast before, but I, uh, my brother, Trevor, who's, who's been on, um, part of the team here, Trevor actually went out and bought a Glock 43, uh, right around the time that came out when we had moved out of my parents' house, we were living together and uh, I was like, Oh, it's pretty, it's pretty badass, man. Like, that's awesome. Like I, I want to get a gun. Right. So he bought it at the, essentially it's the weekend flea market. So then that weekend, uh, we went back to the same stand, the same vendor, um, who's actually the, the gentleman we ended up taking our uh, CPL th- stuff through. Um, but I went back and said, you know, I, I want a Glock. I, I just like what he has. I, I love it. That looks cool. I want a Glock. Uh, like, all I can think of was that scene in U.S. Marshals with Tommy Lee Jones and Robert Downey Jr., you know, about how great Glocks are and stuff. And uh, he didn't have any more in stock. <laughs> and he's like, hey, I can order you one. We'll be here next weekend, but I don't have any more right now. And like a dumbass, I was, I didn't want to wait. Yeah. So I bought the M and P Shield, which it's it's not a bad gun. Um, I fucking hate the trigger, and I, I want to try one of the new <laughs> ones that are coming out. Um, because they they got rid of that uh, hinged trigger, that hinged safety feature built into the trigger. Um, and it's supposed to, I think, make it a little bit better, and they you know eliminate some of the grit. Yeah. Um, yeah. My first gun was the uh, uh, Gen One nine millimeter M and P shield. Uh, I had a Springfield XDS nine millimeter. <sighs> yeah. Um, yeah, that I I bought reluctantly solely for the way it felt in my hands. Which I, I always flip flop back and forth where I'm like, oh, that matters, and sometimes it doesn't matter. I mean, it it, it does, but it shouldn't be the most important piece. But when I had like. To me, and like, in, in, it was months. I think after you bought yours, like within you know the same year. Mm-hmm. So it's like neither one of us knew anything about guns to know really what's better than what's not. And uh, I had had an incident in my apartment that I actually had called the police on 
And yeah. I, just, I wanted something. And, you know, we went to uh, the sporting goods store and the guy was super helpful. He's like, nope, don't make a mission. What do you want to talk? Like, no, he I'll was, talk. he was really cool. And actually that gentleman was the reason why I, uh, I remember was the reason why I switched from, uh, trying to carry with an outside the waistband holster, mm-hmm. um, which is a big long shirt. Uh, yep. he was the, he was the, the reason that, um, I started looking at an, uh, inside the waistband, um, which eventually then led to me, uh, carrying appendix. Yeah. But that was actually an immensely positive experience yeah interaction because we had gone to like three or four places at that point um and due to like not having stock of some things and we went to like a gander mountain yeah i think we were gander mountain for like 45 minutes we couldn't even get anybody to talk to us yep um and i felt pretty bad about that but and we went there uh i think there was a couple other places we went but i know that's what you settled on because that's what you liked it was just the most comfortable and i mean it was all nine millimeter at the time i was like yeah, it's all nine millimeters, so who cares? Like, yeah, no, you know, it's all the same. It's and not exactly. It's not, but I. It was a good first gun. I had it for actually quite a long time up until this year. And you still do have it. And, I, just, oh, and I still do have it, but it, it is no longer my primary uh, carry, carry firearm. Um. Yeah, I mean, there's. I mean, there there are definitely better choices, but there's. It's subjective and it's it's really personal. Yeah. Um, I mean, we can make recommendations all day long. Um, it kind of comes down to what your um, what your use case is going to be. You know, if it's if it's strictly home defense, home defense and personal carry. Um, you know, just personal carry. I mean, it it kind of yeah. varies. Your hand size does make a difference, right? Oh, hundred percent. Because you're like, oh yeah, I love this thing, and it's like I have tiny little hands. Yeah, so I mean, like- and. And there's something to be said for something that's more compact that you can carry more comfortably and stuff. But there's so many options out there on the market now that, that accommodate people with larger hands and smaller hands and smaller guns are harder to shoot and stuff too. So there's just, you really do need to, to talk to somebody and make an educated and informed decision. Um, and, you know, go from there. Basically figure out what you need a firearm for. Um, see if you can shoot a couple and uh make a decision at 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 that point but yeah i mean first firearm uh it's yeah it's 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 really subjective um but there's a lot of offerings out there just uh stick to in my opinion glock sig uh m and p uh some cz models just depending um stay away from stuff like taurus and uh high point uh i would not recommend ruger and i really have a hard time recommending springfield but uh, if you really want to, you can. Um, all right, let's do one more. Let's do one more today, and we'll uh, we'll call uh, it a wrap. All right. Um, way, way in place. Way, well, way slash place to carry concealed um, appendix three, four, five, six o'clock or off body. Um, so that's really subjective. That really just depends um, on your personal preference, comfort levels, thing like that. Uh, I, I mean, <clears throat> personally, I carry appendix and I, th- and I do it in a, an appendix rig holster or, uh, I don't really know how to say that. It carries the magazine and the holster up front. Like a sidecar. Like side by yeah. Side. I mean, the sidecar is the T-Rex arms model. Everyone just kind of well, calls it a sidecar now, but yeah, it keeps the, the, uh, a spare magazine and the pistol up front. And by up front, I mean like your 12 o'clock, like in line with your belly button at the front of your pants. Yep. Um, you know. Um, that's really, really common these days just because the accessibility factor, when you're in a vehicle, you don't have to fight with the seatbelt to get it right. When you're standing, you know, facing somebody, your hands fall somewhat to the front of your body, like on your thighs, it's right there to clear the garment, get to the gun. Yep. Um, I, I prefer appendix carry. I did start carrying at the like four o'clock, five o'clock. Mm-hmm. When I first had my when I first started carrying concealed that that's where I carried because from a comfort perspective th- that's it you know yeah um it doesn't really get more comfortable you know people that complain about that being uncomfortable with an a pet with like uh an in the waistband holster you just have to understand that carrying some plastic and metal uh strapped to the inside of your pants it's not always going to be the most comfortable thing in the world well yeah it's it's a like it's a foreign object on your body it's not it's not you know like right wearing wearing pants like it's bulky in comparison and uh 
So, I mean, like like you said, likewise, I carry appendix when I do carry. Mm-hmm. And that's, um, that's not to say that like, there's something wrong. Oh, no, there's nothing wrong. With, uh, that is uh, pretty. Strong, yeah, strong side carry, you know, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. There's nothing wrong with it. It It's slower. It is slower just because the ergonomics of it, you don't, because you're reaching to your right side, your left hand at that point becomes not entirely, but somewhat useless in terms of garment clearing. Um, so then you're, you're kind of making it a one handed operation. Yeah. Um, so to speak, which is entirely feasible. So there's nothing to say you can't do it. It's just, yeah, we both like carrying an appendix. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people do. It's 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 basically the standard at this point. If you are still carrying three, four, or five o'clock, you're kind of you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. And I mean, if you train that way and and you are um, efficient at doing that, that's fine. Yeah, nothing wrong with it. Um, that's just I, I you have to understand that there's some limitations there, and you're going to have to train uh, accordingly to overcome those and yep. uh, to address to address those no absolutely um i have considered um other locations on my body just being a a woman i mean Mm -hmm. like i don't want to carry like at my six o'clock i don't want the gun behind me but um, that that causes some weird issues too if you were to fall um with your vertebrae and your spine and stuff i have heard some stories of people carrying like backup guns there and uh, i'm not a doctor but i mean i just i don't from an accessibility standpoint, it's a little bit more difficult. Um, from a concealment standpoint, it's it's a little bit more difficult. If you go to bend over and do anything, you're going to yeah, expose you could... your firearm. Um, but there are, um, for, for well, not even just women, but given women's clothing, um, dresses, skirts, um, where I don't have the ability to have... A pant line where I can put a, a traditional holster. Um, there are alternates, you know. There there are are bands, so I still can carry in the appendix uh, position. Um, but there are also yeah. thigh holsters, and there are holsters that some of that stuff I think gets away from what people should look at. If I'm being honest, I mean it wouldn't be the norm. Whatever you do, just be able to train with it and be able to. The repeatability is what you're shooting for. Pardon the pun. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I think when you start getting these things like bra holsters, um, the the garter holster, things like that, it's a little bit kind of just gimmicky um, to, and less than effective in a lot of instances. To a certain degree, um, if I if I needed it, you know, if that was something I wanted, you know. I would rather carry on person and something like that than off mm-hmm. body. Yeah, uh, th- that's a there's a lot of those like con- uh, concealed carry purses and stuff that you see out there too. Don't those uh, stress me out? Just the yeah, thought of them you, stresses me out. Yeah, well, I mean, as much crap as you guys keep in those bags, <laughs> um, I don't have a abundance of, and I and this isn't to be offensive or anything, but like I don't have an abundance of faith in, in any woman to quickly deploy anything from that purse. I just no. don't. There's well, a chance you could go for your gun and come out with a cell phone or an umbrella or some lipstick. Um, okay, to be fair, when you brought up the concealed carry purses, there's a yeah. specific pocket on the back of the purse for the gun. It's the only thing in there. Yeah, until you start filling it with something else because, you oh, just this one time. You know, oh, I could fit snacks in here just this one time or something. And, could I mean, pull out it could your gun and pull out some fruit roll-ups. Yeah, I mean, it could, it could be fine. I just, I don't. It's well, not that off body is never going to be preferable when compared to on body carry. I mean, it's like so easy to snatch. Like, yeah, I mean, if you, if the bag's the taken from you, if you lose the bag, you leave it in the car or something. I mean, there's just, um, yeah, it's just it's not it's not preferable. I would avoid it pretty much altogether. <laughs> I would so, but um, it, this uh, I think this was cool. Uh, we'll probably be doing one of these again. Yeah, it was informative. It had a lot of good discussion, good questions. So, I mean, hey, yeah, keep them coming. Get more questions. More questions came from this. Yeah, I mean, uh, Send them in. definitely shoot us an email, prepared.mindset.podcast at gmail.com. We'll get to your question. Uh, you can shoot us a message on our Facebook page. You can shoot us a message on uh, Instagram. We will, uh, even more in-depth questions. Be happy to do this again, uh, you know, uh, as soon as we get you know some more things i know we didn't get to everything tonight and that's fine i'm gonna work on getting trevor and sam together to get through the rest of this list and uh 
and uh, and have that discussion. I can uh, I look forward to that. But uh, thanks for checking it out this week, you guys. Uh, since this will be our last episode before Christmas, the team here, we all wish you a very Merry Christmas and hope that you and your family enjoy the holiday and enjoy the break from, uh, hopefully, anyway, from work. Uh, kind of the, like you were saying, the stress of the outside world and take some time to just enjoy yourself uh, and relax. And right. for those of you who are working, we support you and we thank you for all that you do. Um you know, our, our medical workers, yeah, law enforcement. Yeah, first responders, absolutely. Thank you. And hopefully you get the opportunity to, to uh, celebrate Christmas with your family in your own way, uh, whether it's Christmas Eve, the day after, uh, whatever you do. But um, like I said, everybody have a safe holiday. Uh, we'll be back at you next week with uh, a new episode. Until then, you guys, get out there, work hard, train smarter, and like we always say here, be prepared. 